crafters, this is Lisa with Fun Stuff Crafts and another Inspiration Friday project. If you're new to my channel, thanks for stopping by and make sure you hit the subscribe button below and you'll be notified each time I upload another Inspiration Friday video. If you'd like to follow me on social media, you can find all those links down below. This week's project is another infusible ink project and uploading a photo and making a tote bag. Let's get started in Design Space. Here we are at the home page of Design Space. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to design the infusible ink project that we're going to put on our bag. Now I've already designed the image that I want to put on and we're going to go ahead and recreate it so I can show you guys how I did it. And then I will definitely save this out there for you guys to be able to use as a guideline. So when I did this project, I had already downloaded a picture of, this is Bocephus. I had already downloaded a picture of Bocephus and did a lot of weeding. We did a Christmas um, project this year um, and used Bo's picture. So you could use any type of image here um, that you want to put in. And so I'm going to go ahead and just show you how I did this one. It is some advanced steps, but I think if you guys just follow along with me, you'll be able to create the same type of, um, of project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my uploaded images because that is where I already have the picture um, of Bocephus. So these are all different images I have uploaded um, over time and, and made projects with. And here is our picture of our cute little Bocephus. And so we are going to, what I want to do is I just want to grab Bo's face out of this image so that I can put it into a circle for our project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab a shape and I'm going to grab a circle and we're going to use the slice feature here. So we're going to go ahead and make this big enough so that I know that I've got Bo's face in there. And I think that's about good right there. And I'm going to use my shift key and I'm going to grab the circle and I'm going to grab the picture of Bo. And then we're going to hit slice. Now when I do the slice, it is going to slice out one picture of Bo, and I'm just going to get rid of that right away. It's going to take a second picture of Bo, and I'm going to get rid of that. And it is this one that I want to keep. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And now I have just got that circle of Bo. Now what I want to do is I want to add a border around it because we're going to use a different color of a fusible ink to create that border. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to use my shape feature um, and I am going to make this the same size that the bow circle is right now or just really close to that same size because what I'm doing is I'm going to make a frame. So that's about the right size. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that image and I'm going to make that guy just be a little bit smaller, not too much smaller. I'm going to use my shift key and I'm going to grab both of my circles and I'm going to align them right in the center. Okay. And then I'm going to use my slice. Now my slice, I've only got the circles picked out. So I'm going to go ahead and slice and I'm going to take out that center one, get rid of it. I'm going to take out this one. I'm going to get rid of it. And there I have got a circle. Now it's just, I'm going to make it just a tiny bit bigger. And you can see now that it is a nice frame around the picture of our Bocephus. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my sliced circle and I'm going to change the color to red just so I can see what it looks like. So now I've got the picture and I've got the, the frame part around it. Now we need to add the words, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight to text and I'm gonna type in my saying. Okay, 
Okay, so we've got our saying done. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to click on the text and make sure your text is highlighted. And by doing that, as long as you are on a desktop and not on a mobile app, you should have the curve feature available to you. And I'm going to go ahead and just click on curve. Oops. And you will see now that my lettering is curved. And you just need to play with um, play with your lettering on your curve setting. And I'm going to curve it a little bit more. Whoops, that's just a little bit too much. And then what I like to do, and I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller so you can see it all. What I'll do now is I'm actually going to go ahead and start to play with it just a little bit there. And I still want to curve it a little bit more. Okay, and then I can just make it a little bit bigger. You can see it's starting to fit. Now, because I'm doing the infusible ink, I want to make sure that my letters are spaced away from that circle. I just don't want to have those put in. So you can see like right where my, oh, I dropped it. Sorry, let's bring this down so you guys can see it a little bit better. When I, what I'm judging it on is that G up there, both my G's, and see where I've got space left between this G and this G, okay? So now, as you can see, I added these cute little puppy prints. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back out to images. Now, right now, my images is still just looking at my uploaded images. So if you click off the, um, the X there, it'll bring you back to the search feature, and I am just gonna put um, paw there and let's see if I can find those cute little paw prints I just used and they're right here. So I'm going to insert them. Now if you guys will notice how these are proportion versus these, they're a little bit different. So what I did again is I'm going to use our slice feature because I want to move these individually around. Okay, so we're doing a lot of slicing today good practice using this um, this feature. So I'm going to go ahead and put that over the top of my pause. And again, I'm going to use my shift key and I'm going to click this paw and I'm going to click, excuse me, the square and the paw and I'm going to say slice. Okay. I can get rid of this slice. I can get rid of this gray slice. And now this guy is individual. So I can portion, proportion him in there and I can bring my other one in here and I can make him just a little bit smaller. And there we have it. So now what you want to do is you want to grab all of those items and you want to group them. And the reason why we're using the group feature and not the attach, attach would turn everything to one color, which we don't want. But we want to group them because we want to be able to resize these to the size that we want on our bag, okay? So when I go ahead and um, so now that I grouped it, I can go ahead and resize it to the size that I want for my bag. Now the bags that I'm using is the Cricut Infusible Bag and it is a 14 by 14. So I want this to be a really good size image on my bag. So I'm going to go ahead and make it 10 and I'm going to let the proportion stay. So see, I left the lock on and so the proportion is there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just go ahead and delete this other one because we're going to use the one that we just created together. And we are going to send this um, into the mat layout piece. And so first I'm going to go ahead and save my project. That way I won't take the chance of losing anything and it shows my bag was successfully saved. And then I'm gonna click on the Make It button, and you're going to see that it is going to um, space out my um, images um, a little bit. And so I'm actually going to bring these guys over to where I want them. That way, when I weed all this out, it's all going to be together. 
Now, normally, let me think about this. I think I'm going to move. No, I'm going to leave both separate because this is going to have some pretty intense weeding in there with the infusible ink. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Now, whenever you're doing infusible ink, please remember to do mirror image. I like to go in and do my mirror image with each one. And really, my circle doesn't need it. But just to be safe, I'm going to do it. So I've got mirror image turned on on each one of these. OK, so once I have our proportion <clears throat> where I'd like it, I'm going to move this over just a tiny bit just because with the infusible ink, it's nice to have a little bit more of a border around. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one at the same time so I won't forget to do it. Same with bow. So now if we go here, we've got our mirror image. We've got our 12 by 12. We're going to go ahead and hit continue. It's out there looking for my machine. Um, and I am using the Bluetooth connection. So as soon as it finds that machine, we're going to be able to set the material that we're going to be using. So here it comes in, maybe. <laughs> so the material we're going to be setting is infusible ink. Okay, and I've already got that as one of my favorites. So I'm going to go ahead and click on infusible ink. I like this. I always remind you guys, read what the sheet is telling you. Make sure mirror image is turned on and material is ink side up, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and pop over to our machine and we'll... Now that we've sent our design um, to the mat, we need to get our mat set up before we load it into the Cricut. So I always keep my plastic covers on my mats, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that off. And I've decided that I'm going to use the Buffalo Plaid um, print of infusible ink. So I have a new package of it that I picked up and I'm gonna do that outside circle um, in the Buffalo um, Plaid and then the writing in black. So let's go ahead and open up a package. If you haven't opened up a package of the infusible ink yet, we will do it together right now. So what comes with um, the infusible ink, is of course the ink sheets um, that we have. And your ink sheets are coming in a protective black, black cover. So we have that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open that up. I'm just gonna use my knife to open it up. And inside of it, we're gonna have um, a cleaning cloth. And we are going to have our ink sheets, of course. And then we are going to have some um, protection paper um, that comes with it and it tells you everything um, um, on here that you will be getting um, with your mats so really important to um, see that here is that little cloth and you can I sometimes use this as a cleaning cloth it's actually used that you can use it for a test run to see what the colors look like if you want to do that um, and then we have got our sheets now if you haven't used the infusible ink before, um, you will be surprised when you open this up that this color is not as bright and vibrant as what you've seen on the packaging. But believe you me, it comes out this way as long as you're using the Cricut product. So you don't want to touch the um, ink sheets. Um, well, you've got to touch them a little bit, but try not to touch them a lot. Also inside of here is a piece of um, paper that we're going to use when we do our transfer piece. So they give you two sheets. Um, actually, there's just one sheet here, and it's like a wax paper. And so we're going to use that when we go ahead and do the um, adhering it with our Easy Press. So my first cut is using the um, is for the black. So I'm going to go ahead and carefully take out one of my black sheets and. This is what's really interesting about these sheets is this black, and I don't know if you guys can see it good on there on the color, but it looks brown, but it comes off black. Now, another thing that's really important to keep in mind here is like it told us in Design Space, you always put this, the ink side up. And I try not to touch my ink as much as possible, but it is really hard. So just be really, careful make sure it's on your paper good excuse me on your mat really well and so I've got a good press on that um, and you can see I've got my mat nice and loaded 
Okay, so I'm gonna pull my machine out 10 inches, the same as we've always talked about, give that clearance behind your machine. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my tray. Now I've already got my fine point, uh, fine point blade loaded. And so I am just going to add this in here, okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit my load button. And then as soon as my Cricut light comes on, which it is, I'm going to go ahead and push it. And it's going over just like it always does to check my tool that I have in that I've got my fine point blade in. And now we're just going to let the Cricut do its magic here. And we'll fast forward through this and then I'll join you back when we're ready to load the next mat. Okay, we're gonna unload that. And I am just going to very gently pull this off. And then we'll work on that in a moment. And let's go ahead and load our second sheet of black. Now I did have to go grab another packet because only one sheet of black comes um, per packet. So I did have some other black on hand. Now I could have maybe used the center of the one that we just cut, um, but I opted not to. I will use all my scraps, believe you me, I will, but I just decided not to this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my machine back up. And this is the one that's gonna be a pretty intense cut because this is the picture of Bo that we're gonna be cutting. So I'll fast forward through this and then we'll get back together when I load the next map. Okay, as you can see, this is going to be some really interesting weeding um, with the infusible ink. I've done this numerous times with the heat transfer vinyl, but it's going to be a little bit different with the infusible ink. So we'll take care of that one in a moment. And then the next one we need to load is our frame, which I'm going to do with this really cute buffalo plaid. You guys may have noticed in there in the video, I know I put it on fast forward, but my mat is not very sticking very well and so you could see a couple times I, I was a little nervous and I had my hands in there holding it down so I would really recommend that you use a pretty fresh mat in fact as I was sitting here I think what I might do is designate some of my mats to be only used for my infusible ink might be able to keep them a little bit nicer that way so I'm gonna go ahead and load the buffalo plaid now and we'll do the circle, and then when we're done with that, we will start weeding. There we have that one. So we're done with our machine right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that back. I'm going to remove our last sheet. And remember how I told you, I always like to keep my protective sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on. And I hang my mats up on my wall, so I'm gonna hang that up over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a pair of scissors. Now, weeding the infusible ink is definitely different than normal weeding. So the first thing I want to do is I want to trim off any excess I have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim around the circle. And I like to trim pretty close because as we know, the infusible ink is a little spendy and so we wanna make sure we can reuse whatever we have. So I have a, a good amount there. Now, with the infusible ink, it's a little bit different. I'm not using my weeding tool initially. And what you do is you pop it. I'm not here, I'm gonna get closer so you guys can hear that. See how it's pop, how it just kind of pops? And then what you wanna do is you, you just want to rip it, and it rips really nice. That sound is probably very annoying. It's a little loud. I apologize. But 
but that takes off that whole outer edge, okay? So now I am actually going to, I, wanna, I don't wanna waste this big patch of my infusible ink. So I am gonna use my um, Cricut knife and I am going to see if I can get a slice in here. And I am actually going to cut away some of this. So I'm not wasting all of this infusible ink. So I'm just gonna trim away in the middle. You can see how I'm just trimming that right away. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pop it and I am going to just pull that right around, okay? So when we get it all laid down, there's a few more steps that we'll be doing also, but I'm gonna set that off to the side, and then we are going to do the same thing here, and this is our words. Um, I'm kind of a big deal to my dog. And so again, I'm going to trim around this one. Might have noticed that I changed my angle on my camera in my last couple videos. Um, love to hear your comments, what you think. Before I was always videoing from above me, and I decided to do a straight on um, video. So, love to hear your guys' comments on that. Is it easier to see, you know, what I'm doing? Um, I feel like I can get things up to the camera closer for you guys. So, same thing here. I'm going to cut in here and I'm going to get close to the letters just so I can save that incised part of the infusible ink. Now remember, I could have probably cut bow and the words all together, um, but I chose not to in this case. So now letters are, are the same right but they're just individual so if you just start it and you can see you can hear that cracking it should just pull up really easy for you and see i can and i just bend it and crack it now see that one started to come up so make sure you push it back down you definitely want your letters to be on your paper okay so if they're not sticking to your paper just bend it and see that's where that one popped out for me and I just bend it and just go on to the next one so you just need to take your time just like we do with all of our other weeding um, the more time you take the the better it is and you don't lose pieces um, this one's not quite as hard as our other vinyl when we forget to weed something out and then trying to find it in the pieces. This one you can pick up pretty easy. But I still like to just, you know, take your time. And now I'm going to get this excess off of here just so I don't have that tail. But you can see how that is weeding really nicely for me. Um, this circle, it's just kind of a long tail that I've got it on it. But you just bend it and pop it up. Bend it and pop it up. Okay, so I got that one all done. Um, so that one is all weeded and is ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up my workspace here before we start weeding bow because that is going to be um, a little bit more intense. I'm going to have to take my close time looking at this one. As you can see, that is what we're going to be weeding. So, I'm going to go ahead and 
trim just like I said we were doing before. As long as all the little pieces stay on, we should be set with this one. The nice thing is, is I'm going to remove the bigger pieces. So, because this part is his nose, I'm going to go double check the picture really quick. Okay, believe it or not, I think that we have got it pretty well done. Now, it is not exact. There are a few of the dots that I um, peeled off, but I definitely think it is still going to look like Bocephus on our um, bag that we're going to be making. So, I'm going to change my camera angle and we're going to move over to where my Easy Press is and we will get set up to transfer this onto the bag. So I've got my Easy Press all set. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our sandwich together of the bag. And so the very first thing that you want to do is one, decide what side you wanna put your design on. And then you are gonna put your mat inside the bag. And then we are going to add a piece of cardstock. And the reason why we're putting the cardstock in is that we want to protect the mat and the bag because your ink is going to go through um, potentially so pretty much most of the time my ink goes through so then what we're going to do is we are going to use our um, lint brush and we are going to roll it the right way Lisa and we're gonna clean off our bag now my bag looked clean before, but as you can see, I've got puppies, and so it picked up a lot of lint. And you definitely want to do that with the ink, because if there's any hair in there, your ink is going to um, not adhere exactly like you want it to. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start layering and putting in our project. Now, my project is the same size as my Easy Press, and so that's really important to think about when you're putting a project together, is you want it to be the same size because with the infusible ink, you do not want to move your um, Easy Press around at all. Um, it'll give you a, a shadow on it. And so what I'm doing right now is I am trimming off that excess um, transfer paper and the reason why I'm doing that is I want to press all at one time so all three of my cuts we're going to do at one time and the reason why I want to do that is because it just gives it a more vibrant color each time you press with the easy press on top of the ink it kind of just takes some of the vibrant color parts away so we're going to go ahead and put Bocephus on there first and I think I got him, let's see, got another piece of hair there. Um, so I've got him pretty much centered. And then the next piece is I am going to want to put is um, my border. And so I'm going to cut into my border and I'm going to trim it. Because I want it to rest right up against Bo's picture. So this trims really easy. If you just get your scissors right next to the edge, um, it trims really very easy here. I'm just going to continue to go around like that. Get it 
all off. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to use some of Cricut's um, heat tape. So that way I can keep my design in place. And so I just like to cut small pieces of this. And what I'll do is you don't need a lot just to save it. And usually I just put it on my fingers so I have it nice and handy to use. But this can go right underneath your heat press. So we are going to get, go ahead and see if we can get this lined up right. So that should butt right up against it. And I'm going to go ahead and... Tape that down. Just adding tape right on the edges there. And just really matching up my design. Okay, need a little bit more tape it looks like. I'm trying to find the edge on it. And you just don't want your design moving, otherwise you will definitely have a shadow. like I should have trimmed off some of this excess because I've got my words going around. That's the next piece. We might have to play with that outer edge there just a little bit. Okay, so the next part is my words. And so I'm going to just make sure that I've got these guys trimmed all the way around. I can see that I've got, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring where I tape this down. And just think about how you're layering it. I actually want, should have probably put my words on first because I want them to be underneath of here. I can see where my cardstock isn't quite under where my ink is going to be. Separately, so I could play with them a little bit differently. And I'm going to trim around them too. Put them underneath. Your ink has got to be touching. And I'm going to move my cardstock around a little bit more now because now I can see exactly where my design is. Okay, so we've got it all set and ready to go. And my Cricut Easy Press is ready to go. It looks like I had a little bit too much time on there. 
So I am going to set it on top. I'm not going to move it once I do it, and I'm going to do a light pressure on it. Okay. And we're going to put it straight down. We're not going to move it once we do it. I'm going to hit my button, and we're going to let 120 seconds go. And then it is a warm peel. So I'll fast forward through this and we'll look at our finished product in just one second. Okay, we are done. So we are going to remove it straight up. And this is where your tweezers come in handy. And because this is really hot, I'm going to go ahead and remove it. And oh my gosh, look at our bag. How cute is that? And take that off, and now you see none of my ink did um, go through. But I could have got this lined up just a little bit better around the edge there, but I think that is absolutely a darling bag. Thanks so much for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. I hope you like this infusible ink project that we used a tote bag for. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to be reminded each time I upload a video. And don't forget to check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'd love to hear from you.